Right, so after two oh. German speaking countries playing each other, we have now the next two German speaking countries playing each other. I just want to give you a short introduction into the team to show you, to give you an overview about the players. Let's start with Bamberg in blue. So if you recognize the number on the water, please follow the names. It will be with the number one, Veit Hoffmann. Number two, Hannes Hoffmann. Number four, Lukas Tada. Number five, Clemens Neumüller. Number six, Hannes Treiber. Number seven, Markus Beringer. Number nine, Adam Füßmann. Number eleven, Sebastian Lange. Number twelve, Niklas Tada. Number thirteen, Gesa Todt. Number fourteen, Michael Nosir. Number fifteen, Andreas Weisenberger. Number thirty, Sebastian Hornu. And number eighty-seven, Jan Hoffmann. We are yeah, this is the German champion, the German champion for the last 12 years, and we go back. Now we go uh, to the uh, Austrian champion, which is Vienna, and we will see the team playing in jerseys in white. We have number one, Andreas Schneiderbauer, number two, Andreas Tanzmann, number three, Matthias Neunteufel, number four, Matthias Wurm, number five, Markus Wimmer, number six, Peter Maritzek. Number seven, Juan Erasso. Eight, Ulrich Pont. Nine, Boris Weisenböck. Ten, Jan Owe Wiesner. Eleven, Peter Kalchgruber. Twelve, Jan Kindermann. Thirteen, Thorsten Lütke. Fourteen, Balduin Landi. And the last but not least, fifteen, Thomas Denk. <coughs> and uh, the referees for this game are uh, chief referee out of the water is uh, Kaiser from Sweden. And it's uh, Horus in the water from Colombia and uh, Jan from Finland. And watching uh, because Horus is applying as an uh, uh, international referee and he's getting his license uh, on this Champions Cup. So we have Bob and Tommy um, from Germany and uh, Austria uh, out of and in the water watching. Uh, and uh, well, it's some kind of exam uh, we have here that uh, Horus is doing. And uh, we wish him good luck. And uh, I'm sure he will be a great referee. He's a great guy. And uh, he already has been at the World Championship for Juniors in Oberhausen. So great referees and two great games, teams in the water. Looking forward for another uh, very cool ge team game. Sorry. Here we see Hannes Hoffmann with his son and his wife. <laughs> very nice picture. <laughs> yeah, being, being television Hilfe stars. Taking, uh, taking care about his, uh, his, his young child now. I assume he's, he's probably also playing because he's already wearing his gear. So. Ah, now he's back. I don't. I just. I don't think they can play with uh, with this kid with too. So I just <laughs> saw Valentina Antichini from uh, the the Italian team, and she had her uh, little kid on her back, and I was asking her if she played like this because it's a good way to hide the ball. Yeah. And then she turns around uh, uh, on the enemy basket, and the kid just throws the ball inside uh, the the goal. So that would be a nice <laughs> way to play. Yeah, that's what uh, uh, the Champions Cup is a lot all about. It's a uh, family, and we call it uh, underwater rugby family. The hashtag was uh, came from here from Champions Cup, and this is how we see it. And it's a great event, you know, coming these teams together from first time from Asia. Two teams playing here. Uh, last year, I think we had the, f the no, the year before we had uh, the first teams from Australia playing here, and this is what it makes it so special to bring for for them for the Singapore uh, teams. It's like a, a, a real big achievement. For years they waited for it. Well, the, the, the camera is a little bit uh, close, but still it's better we see more of the surface of the pool. Oh, but there will be a, I assume there will be a lot of pressure <laughs> towards the Vienna basket. We know Vienna, they're, they're a good team, no, nothing about it, but we also know that Bamberg played for the, the, uh, the final the last couple of years so in every year Bamberg was one of the one of the favorites here for winning this this uh, cup uh, maybe this year they're trying to um, to finalize their dream to become champions cup winner because they in 12 years they won the German championship unfortunately they never won uh, the champions cup and they always uh, were running against uh, uh, Molde in yeah. the end uh, they always lost usually they lost against the winner yeah and, and this is hard and, and maybe this is a chance for Bamberg finally to put uh, the Champions Cup trophy yeah. in their home. But there are some other teams in the way of that. So we see Bamberg already in the half of uh, the team from Vienna. Vienna is defending heavily with uh, players all around. 
but now we see three Bamberg players. Yeah, you can player. see here a blind pass, have you seen it under the deck, and this, is, this was the 1-0. Awesome gameplay! Wow. Have you seen it? it unfortunately, we don't yeah. have a, t a, t a replay, but you have seen this was this hidden pass under the under the feet. I think it was Isa Todd who made a blind pass under the feet of the defender. So he, he were pretending to go through the wall, but he made under his legs and the legs of the defender a blind pass on the other side. There was Lucas Tudder in his, you can say, most popular position, what is the right hand side of the goal. He received the ball, immediately scored, and this is the one zero lead after not, not, not even a minute. This was very, very quick. I, I think this was so unbelievably cool. I don't know if they really wanted to do this, but because it's such a blind pass I've never seen for Bamberg. Yeah, it was really uh, difficult to see here uh, from, from the cameras too. And again, Bamberg is pushing hard and is close to the goal. You see, here's but now they're pulling out with again. The number 13, you're playing around. Clemens Neumann will try to steal the basket. Hannes Hoffmann here received the ball now with the number two. And you see how Bamberg is trying to keep the ball close to the basket to bring here certain pressure. They are forcing the Vienna team to stay underwater to really to attack them. Like here with three players, they're attacking him. Niklas Tada. Oh, there was a but he, to the head. Yeah, he passed the ball through to Hannes Hoffmann. He is giving the ball to Clemens Neumann on the other side. There's Sebastian Hornung. But they maybe they have changed the side now. Still Clemens Neumann to Hornung, yeah. He going in the... In the goalkeeper changing, Sebastian Hornung still having the ball with the number 13. Here, Hannes Hoffmann is supporting him, bringing the ball out, passing down. And though we are on the close side now in Vienna, they're really, really fighting a lot. You see that they're attacking Bamberg with two or maybe three players, but they're not able. Here, Hannes Hoffmann, open side, pushing against, pushing against, and it's in. Hannes Hoffmann is scoring here, the 2 0 against Vienna. And uh, so far, it was a very, very impressive. Um, so game of from dominance, Bamberg so yeah, far, yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they started very, very aggressive in in the game. If you remember the first match they had, Bamberg against uh, Firenze, they also tried to score quite early, and uh, this is also what they're trying to do. This Bamberg tries always to get very hard and very quick in the, into the game, and here they made it very impressive. We're playing three minutes and we have two goals. And it's super difficult for uh, uh, for Vienna to withstand. So they yeah. did a, a very good job in, in being in, so in the spot. That's they it. did. You could see they were fresh. They been down there. Yeah. They defended, but, but nevertheless, Bamberg broke through quite easily. Yeah. You see that it, it, it looks very very easy, but you cannot really make a big um, complaint towards uh, towards Austria because they all. attacked with three players. Of course, you you need to say when you're attacking a player with three. You need to to get the ball, but Bamberg they are so so really strong in ball handling, and and there are still players under water. This this blind pass, which which occurred the the one zero, this was amazing. You know this is maybe some sometimes it works, sometimes not. So this was even there was a bit of luck inside. Or this was very very well done, and the second one even was this the was occurred by a massive attacking. So first second third wave, and by the reason to having the ball all the time around close to the basket. So we see here, even when Bamberg is losing the ball, they're immediately attacking. They're with a lot of people. They're you see Adam is, Frisman is attacking the goalkeeper. Incredible. Very nice. It is, they don't give any space. They don't give any room yeah. to the Austrians um, to, to build up their own game. As soon as they, they are uh, uh, losing the ball, they are back attacking for checking and then they put pressure back again on the Austrian basket and all the Austrians can do trying to be in the way of them but they are attacking so fast in so fast frequency yes, yeah. it's almost impossible for them not to create games because they don't know uh, sometimes I think they don't know where yeah. the ball comes from here's also a very good s scoring opportunity it must be fight Hoffmann here with the or Jan Hoffmann with their attacking opportunity so he and his brother are both supporting each other here so we have a three throw now in favor for Bamberg. So you see here it's getting it's getting rough and rough. Even Bamberg here leading 2-0, they're not stopping. They want to make more goals, but so far Vienna got better in their in their defense. So they sorted themselves. Now here Clemens Neumüller, but here immediately attacked by number nine. Is it, is it Neuteufel? Or what it's, it was number nine Weissenberg Boris who, who who stopped the situation and there it is, another one. This looks really easy, but you know, you have seen this pressure 
Bomberg there, they have attacked the goalkeeper and pushed the goalkeeper away, <coughs> passed the ball through. It was not a mistake, at least by Austria, that you can say, okay, there was no goalkeeper on the basket. Looks like this a looks timeout. very stupid. No, it was, ah, no it was something forced by Bamberg. This is a situation occurred by Bamberg, and <coughs> they trained it very intensive. They the tried to perfection it. It must be so frustrating for Austria not even to, to be able to leave their own half and yeah. being stopped so fast by the forechecking of Bamberg. Call from the referee from above. But you know, I've played in eight years, I've played first league in underwater rugby. I just remember that me and my team, we just scored one single goal in eight years of my first league history. And this was when Bamberg just came with six players at the league round because it was snowing <laughs> and people arrived too late. So we had 12 minutes time. We need, it take, took us 12 minutes to score one single goal against six Bamberg players and with a full squad. It was unbelievable, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so this is a... Uh, but... but we need to we need to s finish the story at the half time the players arrived they could three players bring in the water and we lost i don't know 10-1 <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable but this this is a good chance for austria here to get close to the uh, german basket and to put a little bit pressure on it it doesn't look like um the bamberg were really like uh, under pressure here but nevertheless the austrians have been um in in holding a touch distance to the Bamberg goalie, but here we go back again very fast to the Austrian basket. This is very, very typical for Bamberg. It's very, very typical that the Spieler in the Gegner hineinschwimmen, sich davon aber nicht nach oben ziehen lassen, versuchen quasi unter den Spieler unten drunter zu kommen, die, die Ballhand frei zu bekommen, sich nach oben abzustoßen, quasi den anderen Spieler wegzublocken und dadurch den Weg frei zu machen für die zweite Welle. Das werden wir mit Sicherheit im Laufe des Turniers noch öfter sehen. Auch sehr auffällig bei Bamberg, dass man das Zentrum des, des Spiels, also hier wirklich das Mittelfeld und die direkte Linie von zwischen den beiden Körben sehr, sehr dominiert. Also jede Mannschaft, die versucht, hier irgendwie den Ballbesitz nach vorne zu tragen, scheitert. Das zwingt die Mannschaften oft an die Außen zu gehen, was den Schwimmweg erweitert, was natürlich wieder Bamberg in die Karten spielt, sich in ihrer Verteidigung zu sortieren. Also diese taktische und strategische Aufstellung der Bamberger ist immer wieder wunderschön anzusehen. Hier kann man sich wirklich was fürs Positionsspiel ausgucken. Ähm, man wird eigentlich nie wirklich einen gefährlichen Konter bei Bamberg sehen, weil einfach dieses Zentrum, diese direkte Linie von Ball zum Korb eigentlich immer unterbunden wird. Man muss immer um einen Bamberger außen rumschwimmen und da haben die eine so unfassbare Präsenz. Und Konsequenz ähm, auch in der Umsetzung. Auch Konsequenz, genau, dass man einfach da viele einen Sicherheitsabstand mit einbauen und der Schwimmweg dann eben so groß wird, dass es einfach für den Torwart gar nicht mehr gefährlich wird und die ja. Situation so frühzeitig antizipiert werden kann, dass da gar nichts anbrennt. Ja, die die Vorcheckig-Reichweite von den Bambergen ist wirklich äh, unglaublich, wie die plötzlich die Bälle rausfischen. Auch hier diese Doppelpass-Situation wieder sehr schön gemacht. Die Bamberger bleiben unten liegen, geben den Ball dann wieder ab. Dieses, diese Bodenkontrolle, diesen Ball am Boden zu halten, zwingt halt immer den Gegner, diesen ganzen Weg zu schwimmen, eben nicht nur Und bis zur Hälfte. Und noch ein Tor, sehr schön hochgehoben von der Mitte, von, von der Mitte des Korbes raus. Das ähm, müsste Torwart, auch ein äh, Hoffmann gewesen sein. Mit der Schulter hochgehoben und da den Ball reingelegt. Ja, wir haben hier Jan Hoffmann mit der 87, hat das 4 zu 0 gemacht. Auch wir schön weggeblockt, schön den Ball am Boden, einmal komplett um den Korb rumgeführt. Und Aber das muss frustrierend sein für, für Österreich, gerade hier überhaupt nicht so richtig von der Stelle zu kommen. Das Gefühl zu haben, man läuft gegen eine Wand und die ist massiv. Ja, die ist sehr massiv, das ist wohl wahr. Aber ich glaube, ich glaub, ich weiß nicht wirklich, ob jetzt mal unter uns gesprochen, ob Vienna sich wirklich so viele Chancen jetzt in dem Spiel ausgerechnet hat. Ich glaube, hier geht es einfach auch darum zu oh, gucken, schneller konnte hier. was kann man denn alles so machen. Auch hier wieder eine tolle Aktion. Jemand sieht auch, wie die Bamberger dann das Tor einnehmen. Hier der Spieler, ja. der sich um das Tor rumschleicht. Das müsste Veit gewesen sein. Veit Hoffmann mit der Nummer 1. Der hier natürlich dann auch direkt blockt und direkt auch seinem Mitspieler darin supportet. Eben nicht nur unten liegen zu bleiben, sondern sich durch seinen Körper auch noch einfach Platz zu verschaffen. Und hier immer wieder der Ball nach unten, der Pass nach unten. Clemens Neumüller hier mit der Aktion. Mit dem schnellen Ballgewinn gibt an die... Und wir sehen hier eine Hand am Korb. Da war er gerade wieder festhalten am Ring. Aber wahrscheinlich keine offensichtliche Torchance hier, sonst wäre dieser Strafstoß gegeben worden. Aber ja, wie du es gerade sagst, frustrierend, wenn man sich natürlich das Ziel setzt, das Spiel gewinnen zu wollen. Wenn das Ziel natürlich ist hier, zum Beispiel unser Ziel ist es, wollen, möglichst ja. wenig Tore zu kassieren und zum Beispiel das Spiel bis zum Ende 4-0 gehalten wird, dann ist das ja auch schon ein Teilerfolg. Auch Vienna hat ja weitere Gegner hier noch anzutreten, äh, auch, auch zu bezwingen und hier geht es ja dann auch am Ende 
um die Endplatzierung. Ja, also ich kann mich an vor zwei Jahren erinnern, als die Wiener noch Letzter geworden sind, Turnier Letzte. Damals hatten sie eben eine Gruppe, zusammen glaube ich mit den Orcas und mit irgendwie Ackerern und mit den mit äh, der USA oder was und haben halt dann in der Vorrunde alle drei Spiele verloren. Nee, nee, gegen die, gegen die Australier. Waren dann quasi Letzte in der Gruppe, konnten noch in den letzten Platz spielen. Das war dann gegen damals die USA aus New Jersey und die waren auch gut aufgestellt, das haben sie unglücklich verloren und äh, dann waren sie auf einmal Turnierletzter. Ich glaube, das Ziel haben sie, hier nicht Letzter zu werden. Irgendwo sich im Mittelfeld wieder einzuordnen, vielleicht eher am oberen Ende der, oder am oberen Teil der Tabelle, ähm, um hier vielleicht, sag ich mal, realistisch das einzuordnen. Und dann ist eigentlich ein Teilerfolg für dieses Maximalziel, ist eigentlich ein Teilerfolg, hier ein gutes Ergebnis gegen die Bamberger abzuholen. Ich meine, sie machen einen guten Job. Also sie geben, sie geben denen wirklich keinen, versuchen keinen Millimeter Raum zu geben. Aber der Druck, den die Bamberger aufbauen und auch die, die Konsequenz, was vor uns und Disziplin, die die in ihrem Angriffsspiel haben, das ist, der nächste Spieler ist schon da, bevor überhaupt der, der Wechsel in die Verteidigung kommt. Es geht so schnell und mit so viel Druck, dass, dass, dass sie gar keine Chance haben. Und dann ist die Konsequenz in der Umsetzung, die Tore zu machen, ist einfach faszinierend. Sehr, sehr gutes Spiel. Und äh, ich glaube schon, dass Bamberg ähm, hier nicht zum Champions Cup gekommen ist, um einfach mitzuspielen. Die wollen okay. gewinnen. Die wollen also diesmal wirklich gewinnen. Eine Sache ist ja wohl klar. Der Druck in Deutschland auf Bamberg wächst natürlich ja. immer mehr. Wir haben jetzt auch einfach, wir sehen es ja in der, auch international anhand der Euro League hier, der direkte Konkurrenz TSV Mahl schläft nicht, hat ein paar interessante Neuzugänge in dieser Saison, auch wirklich bekannte Namen aus der Nationalmannschaft, die dazugekommen sind. Auch der DOC Krefeld... <lacht> Ähm, hat sich jetzt nicht unbedingt verstärkt, aber die Spieler sammeln unfassbar viele Erfahrungen. Fünf Spieler aus dem Kader des DOCs haben bei der Junioren-Weltmeisterschaft äh, die deutsche Mannschaft quasi bis ins Finale begleitet und dort den zweiten Platz geholt. Ähm, das ist natürlich auch die Konkurrenz, die unten nachrückt, die Druck aufbaut. Bamberg hat es geschafft, zwölfmal in Folge Deutscher Meister zu werden. Der große Traum ist natürlich der Gewinn des Champions Cups. Dafür muss man Deutscher Meister werden. Mal angenommen, sie schaffen es dieses Jahr nicht. Dann ist die nächste Chance überhaupt zu schaffen schon wieder mindestens zwei Jahre hin. Ne? Wenn sie im Jahr darauf wieder nicht gewinnen, ist es dann drei Jahre hin. Die wissen, die Uhr tickt und die Mannschaft, und das muss man nochmal sagen, Bamberg hat unglaublich viel investiert in diesem Jahr. Also ich habe das mir wieder beobachtet. Auch ich mit meiner Heimmannschaft, die OC Darmstadt, wurde regelmäßig zu Trainingslagern eingeladen. Die haben sich im Vorfeld des Champions Cups gefühlt jedes Wochenende getroffen. Wirklich jedes Wochenende, Samstag, Sonntags miteinander das Becken geteilt und da intensive Trainings gemacht, auch Strafwürfe geübt, die ganzen Standards geübt. Also Bamberg ist hier mental wirklich sehr gut vorbereitet, hat hier ganz viele äh, Übungseinheiten durchgezogen und möchte natürlich jetzt auch hier nicht den Fehler machen, den Turnierstart zu verpennen, sondern drückt von Anfang an und packt da auch gleich direkt alle Spielzüge aus, damit die natürlich dann auch in den wichtigen Spielen auch passen und sitzen. So what we were just talking about in German is um, Bamberg really is in need of this win here from the Champions Cup. They have been the German champion for 12 years and um, they, they, they are, like Thorsten just said in German, they are under pressure from younger teams from March too and they are under pressure just from their own history participating more than 10 years in the Champions Cup, not winning and but still they are the biggest champion Germany ever had in yeah. underwater rugby. Yeah. So this is, this is a kind of connection everybody's asking, well, why, did you, why didn't you yet win the Champions Cup? They are asking themselves probably yeah. because they are pro they're pretty much uh, frustrated in the last years after the Champions Cup. So uh, again here Bamberg is pushing hard on uh, the Austrian basket. And it, it's amazing how they, they just You've seen this go very into, very nice. into the, the Hannes defense. Hoffmann here with the move now. Here the ball comes back. Very nice, well done. So Michael Nozier was putting himself at a six o'clock position at the basket. He made it way, way uh, free for uh, Hannes Hoffmann who was swimming on the open side. He tried to score, he didn't make it, so he gave the pass directly immediately on the other side of the basket. And uh, this was very, very nice. Now the underwater referee here points some players. It was a... Holding? Maybe it looks like a holding. Is it a penalty or what is no, it? No, it's a free throw, I think. Free throw? Are you sure? No, I think it's a penalty, no? Should be yeah. more... Yeah, no, it's a penalty. It's a huh. penalty shooting now. So there's one player. One against one, Bamberg now has the chance in a, a one against one to make here a penalty shooting. And let's see who's going to score. 
on the defense side, if you see number um, number four, number four. for uh, Austria. Oh, this is this very well, uh, and he's so lying exactly in the oh way of. Oh, this was a good attack. Ah, oh, very nice, wasn't it? In? Yeah, I guess I would have said no. It was not under the ring. Yeah, it was but really it was uh, the same level. Leveling. Of the ring. Wow. This was very crazy. So Hannes Treiber from Bamberg could not score against number four. What is Matthias Wurm? Matthias Wurm defeated the penalty by Hannes Treiber and uh, keeps here the four zero so far. So we have now. Game is continuing. Seven minutes left now in the second half, and this is a kind of, uh, yeah, what can you say? Partial victory. This is something that, what, that may motivate Vienna to continue and to progress in this tournament. But that was very close because the ball yeah. was in the basket, and yeah. from what I have seen, it was not totally under the it ring, was not under but ring. It, it was super close. So, super uh, close. Uh, well, the, they don't need the point. But nevertheless, yeah, but you, you throw a penalty. You notice you they've also oh, they've prepared a lot in the penalty shoot. I was wondering if it's Hannes Treiber, because Hannes Treiber is a goalkeeper. And usually not the best attacker. They have Lukas Tada, they have uh, Andy Weisenberger, so they have some, some other guys there. Mm, quite, I've, I've expected more to do. So if, if it will be a close match, it will be probably one of those both attacking and making it and now there's Andy Weisenberger supporting from the open side yeah Lukas Tatar so this was a very nice gameplay Andy Weisenberger attacked directly the goalkeeper but assisted Lukas Tatar who came you can say at the so you can say from the floor level he attacked and then the down from the down level Lukas Tatar came here received the ball and uh, pointed 5-0 now for Bamberg in blue against uh, Vienna in uh, white and we have uh, six, uh, roughly six minutes left in the second half here. This is game 15 in our Champions Cup uh, 30 here in Berlin and I'm with uh, Thorsten Stanschus. Uh, he is the coach of the German Junior U21 team and I'm Wolf here from uh, the local uh, club Sporthauer and we are your commentators here in this game of the Champions Cup. Bamberg again going very for very the nice goal from the open side. This also he tries now to attack to bring the ball on the other side. But number 18 here from uh, Vienna. Very well defended. <laughs> Unfortunately. And here comes Vienna. Tries to break free through the forechecking of uh, Bamberg. But it's, it's crazy how one Bamberg, like this, this, this yeah. inception. Interception uh, is crazy. It, it, it's just like he was behind the this two players. This was a very dangerous situation. If the ball would have come through, it would be a very good chance for Vienna. But they, they caught the ball out. Call the from throw. the referee, yeah. free throw against Vienna. So there are four minutes and 40 seconds left now. It's a 5 0 lead for Bamberg. Here now we see Sebastian Lange stealing the basket. He's a very well experienced goalkeeper, so probably with a lot of brief. If Bamberg is now doing it very quick, this may be a good opportunity. They're putting not too much effort in. So it's now Hannes Treiber. There's a next three throw. And this three throw is uh, against. So the ball was out. And uh, Sebastian now is leaving, of course, the, the uh, opponent basket. Bring himself in a four checking position. And now trying to get the ball down. And that's it. No chance now. They're attacking another one. And now an uh, Austrian player tries to attack. Good opportunity now from, from, from but above. But number 15 is pushing the goalkeeper. He should not do this. This could be also called a foul. So this is unnecessary. And now it's probably what he's doing now. So he points some player. What is he saying? Deck ref. Oh, the, the underwater referee is coming to the surface. Okay, it's in favor for Vienna now. There was a warning, probably a personal warning for a Bamberg player. Um, there's a question from Alejo uh, Aranjo. Uh, the white team is from uh, Vienna, Austria, yeah. from Vienna. And, and blue again. team is Bamberg from Germany. And now here's another one. Hannes Streiber here, playing goalkeeper usually, is now here attacked the player. And yeah, winning the ball, very nice. Hannes Hoffmann here, yeah. And Sebastian Lange leaving the goal, passing. Oh, it seems that Hannes Treiber is playing attacker here. If I see that Clemens Neumüller is playing ball the from goalkeeper. from the referee, holding without ball, free throw against uh, Austria. Yeah. It seems that in the, in the structure, 
planes or in their, in their positioning. They changed a bit in the Bamberg team. I don't know if they have a lack of attackers, but it's quite nice to see. Uh, Adam Fussmann, you know, passing wow. through to Lukas Tada and scored. Very nice, well done. And you see it's always like the same pattern. Like you have one guy attacking from the open side, lifting a bit all the people up, bring the ball down where the second wave, what is usually Lucas Tanner yeah, is coming, yeah. and he immediately, he just needs a free spot to push the ball against the goalkeeper. And usually when he has the chance to do this, in 90% the ball is in. And the Austrians even see, did see what happened. There were two players, defenders, on the ha on the around uh, Lucas Tada, but nevertheless he was, uh, uh, they couldn't stop him. Now, you s it, it's amazing. And we have uh, two minutes left. And uh, Austria is still in the game and is doing a very good job being in the game, concentrated. They don't seem exhausted. And like this, uh, this action we see here right now, one player breaking free out of the attack of uh, Bamberg. Going forward, we see now a lot of Austrian players, three Austrian players going as a team into now the this basket. Is a this is a move, nice yeah. from the open one into the closed side, the pass. And there's already the second wave down waiting yeah. from Austria. This is a nice attack, but you see... But you see, they, they're stopped. losing the ball to close. They're bringing the ball close to the basket, but then they're moving the ball a bit away from the basket. What's what brings enough space for a defender and an attacker getting between basket and the ball. But then the, the, the Vienna still tries to bring the ball on the other side, but there are too, ma too many hands between. This is why they're losing so often the ball. They should have tried to keep the ball directly at the oh, basket. Oh, this was a on the empty this basket. This is the empty basket from Lukas this is what I just said. Um, Austria is really in the game, but now they threw everything they have yeah. in the offense. They had a good chance, but they, yeah. they more or less destroyed by, by themselves than by not keeping consequently the pressure and the ball at the basket. From the moment you, you go in a bit away, th the chance is over. Then you need to yeah. re reorganize yourself. You pay immediately. Against against Bamberg. Yeah, you pay immediately against uh, a team like Bamberg. So here we see now uh, a 7-0 lead of Bamberg the with, with, with a certain pattern of goal scoring. So there's, there are always two to three players involved, except of the empty goal score from Lukas Tada, but was based on uh, very aggressive forechecking from Vienna. But um, I'm not really sure if it's, it's, it's quite smart now to still to try to make a goal, because since Vienna tried to to attack the Bomber goal, they have, they have received a goal after another. And, and now the game is over. End of this game, and it was a 7 0. 7 0. It was a 4 0 halftime result. There was a penalty which was not made by Hannes Treiber against a uh, number. Who was it? No, Wurm. I've seen this number. Uh. Yeah, Matthias Wurm, who defended the penalty against Hannes Treiber. And. Um, but nevertheless, here Bamberg is the winner, and so far we look forward to the last match of today, which is n half past nine, when we see the Turkish team playing against the Bamberg team, and this will decide who will win the group. Yes, and uh, this is what I want to talk about. Uh, we saw the Turkish uh, game against uh, Vienna, against uh, Austria, and I, I'm, I'm not so convinced of what I saw. It was a 3-1 win yeah, for, for uh, yeah. Turkey and I saw a, a strong Turkish team, yeah. that's for sure, but not like I haven't seen the, the, the core of the team, that's what they do, what they are it. able to do. And uh, I was a little bit like, okay, they have uh, experienced players, they have uh, uh, EuroLeague players in their ranks. National players, as you see on the jerseys, so you see the EuroLeague jerseys, you see the national team jerseys. So, but on the other side, you don't... You Please don't forget that uh, it was the first game of the day. Yes. And they had, uh, of course, at least a mentally weak opponent they played against. And sometimes when you play against weak teams, we all know that, not to say Vienna is, is weak at all, but you know what we mean in, in, in comparison that they, that they expected to play the, the good teams and prepared for the good, really, really top teams here. 
and they thought about okay Vienna we're probably gonna win and then it was tougher than expected yes because Vienna also prepared very well as yes. we've seen against Bamberg yes. and for Vienna it is like uh, um, if they play against Bamberg they know what they're facing but if they play ag against a team like uh, uh, the Turkish team here they have a chance to score and they did once so this is for them these are uh, games they really have to invest their power and their energy yeah. So I'm curious uh, now against Firenze. I think uh, the Turks are the uh, the stronger team in this uh, in this be. upcoming game. But like I said, I haven't seen them playing like I expect them probably to play. And um, I wasn't sure if it is uh, the top one of the top teams or will it be in the the in the center of the 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 scoring of all teams. So let's see what they have in store. Um, for sure they have the potential uh, to play even against the top teams or to, to, to give a good game against uh, teams like Rixu or like, uh, uh, what else do we have uh, in store, like Flipper. So maybe try to tell you something about the, the players at all. Maybe we have here a team list of the Turkish team playing in, uh, in blue. Where are the names? DFS. Yeah. DYSK. Yeah. 